Accurate and efficient data collection is essential to any animal behavior research project. Once you've designed your experiment, you should start to consider which data collection method to use when you carry out your experiment. The method you choose will depend on your research question and the kinds of behaviors you need to record in order to answer that question. For example, do you need to know how often a behavior occurs or the duration of each behavior? Are the behaviors of interest states or events? Will you be observing individuals or groups? You should choose the observation method that will best enable you to answer your research question. You should also choose the method that will allow you to observe your subjects most accurately. In Chapter 5, you will learn about the various methods of data collection and you will have a chance to practice each method while watching a video of behavior. Most of these examples have a particular research question, ethogram, and data sheet associated with them. You will find these materials in the supplemental materials included with this DVD. Use the data sheets to record the behaviors you observe according to the instructions you receive. The first method we will cover is ad libitum sampling. This method is a non-systematic and informal way of recording what the observer sees. Ad libitum sampling is descriptive rather than quantitative and can be subjective. Therefore, it isn't as rigorous as systematic methods for the purpose of scientific study. However, it does provide an overall picture of the behavior of your subjects and can sometimes capture rare events and previously unknown behaviors that systematic observation might not capture. The initial observations you made when creating an ethogram are an example of ad libitum sampling. The daily logs zookeepers make for captive animals and the field notes researchers record for wild animal behavior are also examples of ad libitum sampling. Ad libitum sampling is often paired with other more systematic methods and can be helpful for establishing the context and time frame in which the behavior was observed. Unlike ad libitum sampling, the next two data collection methods we will cover are systematic and involve recording behavior continuously over time. One systematic sampling method is called continuous animal sampling. It is the most detailed and information-rich method. It is also the most labor-intensive. When you use this method, your attention is usually focused on a single individual called the focal animal. On occasion, this method can also be used for small groups of animals. In this method, you record when each behavior begins and when it ends, with no breaks between behaviors. Focal animal sampling will produce a complete record of what the animal did during the time you observed it. This is one of the reasons your ethogram needs to be exhaustive and the behaviors mutually exclusive. Data collected using focal animal sampling looks like a list of the start and stop times of the behaviors on the ethogram. To expedite your data collection, you can use two-letter codes for each behavior, such as RS for resting and FE for feeding. And a digital stopwatch is handy for any data collection where the behavior is timed. Continuous focal animal sampling will give you information about the duration, rate, and sequence of behavior. This method can be used to measure both behavioral states and events. Focal sampling also allows you to record which individual initiated a behavior and which animal the behavior was directed toward, if any. Because you need to record the start and stop time for each behavior, this method can be difficult if you are focusing on more than one individual or if there are a large number of behaviors in your ethogram. To get around this, some researchers use laptop or portable handheld computers with behavior recording software installed. Under certain circumstances, you can also record behavioral observation sessions using a video camera. Using video is more time-consuming than live observation because you will have to replay the video later in order to log the data. Video recording works best for animals that spend most of their time in a single location, and some animals are much more difficult to record on video than others. This is a female crane. During the next section of the chapter, 
Practice collecting behavioral data for this individual using the continuous focal animal sampling method. Locate the ethogram and data sheets entitled Continuous Sampling in the supplemental materials provided with this DVD. Take a look at the ethogram for the crane. Read the descriptions of each behavior in the ethogram. These are the behaviors you will be recording during the following exercise. Using these codes will make data collection more efficient. Take a few minutes to read the instructions and become familiar with the behaviors on the ethogram and data sheets. You may pause the video while you do this. Once you have familiarized yourself, restart the video. During the following set of exercises, you will see a segment of video three times. In the first exercise, you should simply watch the video and associate the behavior listed on the ethogram with the behaviors you observe. The second time you watch the video, collect behavioral data according to the instructions provided. The third time you watch the video, check the data you collected for accuracy. The video is about to begin. Remember to simply observe the behaviors and match them with the behaviors listed on the ethogram. Begin now. Now, using the ethogram and data sheet provided, record the start and stop times for each type of behavior you see using the two-letter abbreviations for each behavior as shown in the ethogram. Begin collecting data now. Next, watch the video again and check your data. Start now.
If your data are different from what you see here, go back to the beginning of this section and repeat your data collection. Sometimes, animals engage in a particular behavior for an extended period of time, but may pause briefly or interrupt their ongoing activity. Should you note every time an animal does this? This can make continuous data collection very tedious and overly detailed. If an animal is grooming, but pauses now and again for a second or two, you should still record it as grooming. But what if it pauses for longer than that? You may use what is often called the five-second rule. If your subject is engaged in one behavior and switches to a second behavior, count for five seconds. If the animal switches back to the original behavior within five seconds, then you do not need to record the second behavior. This rule is just a guideline. For some species, such as birds, behaviors happen rapidly, so five seconds may be a long time and a shorter time frame may be appropriate. But for a sloth, five seconds may be too short and you may have to lengthen the five second rule. Now let's look at another sampling method that uses continuous observation. For all occurrences sampling, you note every occurrence of the behaviors described in your ethogram. Depending on your research question, you can simply keep a tally of each behavioral occurrence, or you could also note the time the behavior occurs or the location of the animal when it occurs. You could also record which animal the behavior was directed toward and any responses other animals made to the behavior. This method is ideal for behaviors that are events. All occurrences sampling can give you information on the rate or frequency of behavior as well as the sequence of behaviors. All occurrences sampling is relatively easy to do unless the behavior in question is very frequent, there are many behaviors on the ethogram, or you are studying a large group of animals. This method is often paired with a method suited for studying states so that both events and states can be studied at the same time. An example of all occurrences data could look like this. Depending on your research question, you can use codes to identify specific individuals and M and F to identify males and females. Find the ethogram and data sheets entitled All Occurrences Sampling in the Supplemental Materials. Take a few minutes to read the instructions and become familiar with the behaviors on the ethogram and data sheets. Once you have familiarized yourself, restart the video. In the following set of exercises, you will record the behavior of the deer using the All Occurrences Continuous Sampling Method. The video is about to begin. Now, using the ethogram and data sheet provided, collect all occurrences sampling data from the video clip. Begin collecting data now.
Now let's check your data. Begin now. When feasible, it's a good idea to keep track of the identity of each animal. You can do this through individually marking each animal with a number or with color bands, depending on the species, or by identifying individuals through their unique pattern of markings. Recall from Chapter 4 that your sampling units should be independent of each other. That means that they shouldn't influence each other. But members of a group often influence each other's behavior. In some cases, individuals within a group, especially in highly social species, influence each other so much that the entire group must be treated as a sampling unit. As you will see later, correctly matching each individual with its behavior can be important to certain research questions, especially when you're interested in interactions between individuals. Of course, keeping track of individuals is sometimes impossible when you are dealing with a large herd or flock. Bear in mind that some individuals may contribute more to your data set than others, but you won't know which ones. Depending on your research question, this may or may not be a problem. Data independence will be discussed more in Chapter 6. The next two sampling methods we will discuss involve sampling behavior at timed intervals rather than continuously. The first method is called instantaneous or scan sampling. This method can be used to observe the behavior of one animal or a group of animals and can include multiple behaviors. However, this method gets more complicated as the number of animals and or behaviors increases. In this method, you only note what the animal is doing at preset intervals, for example, every 30 seconds. It is as if you are taking a photograph every 30 seconds, looking at the photo and recording what the animal is doing in the picture. The animal can only be doing one behavior from your ethogram in the photo. So again, your ethogram must be exhaustive and the behaviors mutually exclusive. This method is better suited to studying states rather than events because it is very unlikely that an event will actually occur in coincidence with the end of your interval. This method is easier than continuous sampling and gives you an estimate of the time spent in different states. This estimate is generally very accurate when you choose an appropriate time interval. Stopwatches are commonly used in scan sampling to mark the passing of the sampling interval. Choosing a sampling interval is somewhat of an art, but generally you should choose short intervals, say every 10 seconds to a minute for animals that are active, fast, or that change behavior often. Longer intervals can be used for animals that are less active, slow, or rarely change their behavior. If you use too long an interval with an active animal, you will miss a lot of behavior in between your sampling intervals and your data are likely to be inaccurate. Conversely, using a very short interval with an inactive animal creates unnecessary work for the observer. Conducting some preliminary observations with various time intervals will give you a good sense of how long the interval should be. You can also refer to the scientific literature to see what interval other researchers have used. Here is a sample of data from a scan sampling study with only one focal animal. You can see that at each interval or scan, only one behavior is checked off for the animal. During the next set of exercises, 
Practice collecting behavioral data using the focal animal scan sampling method by watching a video clip of a coyote. Take a look at the ethogram for the coyote. Take a few minutes to read the instructions and become familiar with the behaviors on the ethogram and data sheets. You may pause the video while you do this. Once you have familiarized yourself, restart the video. In this exercise, the sampling interval will be 5 seconds, indicated by a beep. Begin now. Now, using the data sheet, check off the behavior the focal animal is engaged in at each sampling interval. Again, you will hear a beep every five seconds. That's your signal to record the behavior you observe at that moment. For each interval, you should record only the behavior you see at the beep. Start now. Stop now. Next, watch the video again and check your data. Start now. Check that your data sheets have the same behaviors and that there is one and only one behavior recorded for each interval. Remember to keep track of each individual you observe using this method with a separate data sheet. Repeated observations of the same animal are not independent data points, and an individual's behaviors can only be averaged across that individual. Therefore, if the animals in your study are not individually identifiable, 
it goes without saying that you won't be able to repeat your observations of the same animal. Now let's turn from observing an individual to observing a group using the focal group scan sampling method. When you focus on a group rather than an individual, you should scan the group in a consistent way at each time interval so that you don't miss any members of the group. For example, you could always scan the group from left to right and note the behaviors of each animal as you encounter it in your scanning sweep. Or you could scan all adults and then juveniles. It doesn't really matter, as long as you are as consistent as possible each time. Also, your scan should only take a portion of the interval to complete. For example, if your scanning interval is one minute, try to complete your scan in under 20 seconds. Here is a sample of data from a scan sampling study of a focal group of animals. Each check represents the behavior of one animal in the group. Since you'll be recording only one behavior during each interval for each animal, the total number of checks at each interval should be the same. In the next set of exercises, you'll record the behavior of a group of deer using the scan sampling method. Locate the ethogram and data sheets entitled Focal Group Scan Sampling in the Supplemental Materials. Because you have more animals to keep track of, the ethogram contains fewer behaviors. In addition, since you'll have more animals to observe, you may want to lengthen the interval between each scan. You may pause the video while you do this. Once you have familiarized yourself, restart the video. For this set of exercises, the sampling interval will be 30 seconds, indicated by a beep. At each interval, the camera will scan the group from left to right. Make a mental record of what each animal is doing. At first, simply observe the behaviors and compare them to the behaviors listed on the ethogram. Begin now. Now, using the data sheet, check off one behavior for each animal in the group during each 30-second interval. Again, you will hear a beep every 30 seconds. You should record the behavior of each animal once it is completely within your view. Remember to scan the animals in a consistent order and be sure not to record data for the same individual twice during each interval. There are 13 animals in the group, so you should record 13 behaviors per interval. Begin now.
Stop now. Next, watch the video again and check your data. Start now. Check that your data sheets have the same behaviors as the video and that there are only as many behaviors recorded per interval as there are animals in the group. Scan sampling is one method based on timed intervals. Another method is called 1-0 sampling. In this method, you record whether or not each behavior in your ethogram occurred during each interval. You record a zero for a behavior if it did not occur during a given time interval, and a one if it occurred at all, regardless of the number of times it occurred during the interval. A zero or a one should be recorded for each behavior on the ethogram during each interval. The benefit of one zero sampling is that it is easy to do. After the sampling period is over, you tally the number of intervals during which each behavior on the ethogram occurred. This will give you an approximation of the amount of time the animal spends performing each behavior. However, because 1-0 sampling gives each behavior that occurred during the interval the same score, it tends to overestimate rare behaviors and underestimate common behaviors. Therefore, it is less accurate than scan sampling. However, this method is a good way to quantify behaviors recorded in keeper reports or field notes. For example, if you were interested in reproductive behavior but only had daily keeper reports as a data source, you could review each report and record a zero for each day no breeding behavior was observed and a one for the days it was observed. This effectively converts the non-quantitative data in the reports to quantitative data that can be analyzed but only if the reports were kept in a systematic manner to begin with. This is a sample data sheet from a 1-0 sampling study. Note that during the first interval, the researcher observed only feeding and pacing behaviors and nothing else. During the second interval, the animal ate, rested, displayed, and so on. During the next set of exercises, Practice collecting behavioral data using the 1-0 sampling method by watching a video clip of a tiger. Locate the ethogram and data sheets entitled 1-0 sampling in the supplemental materials provided with this DVD. 
Take a few minutes to read the instructions and become familiar with the behaviors on the ethogram and data sheets. You may pause the video while you do this. Once you have familiarized yourself, restart the video. In this exercise, the sampling interval will be 10 seconds, indicated by a beep. Begin now. Stop now. Now collect data from the video during each sampling interval. You will hear a beep every 10 seconds. That's your signal to record the behaviors you observed and did not observe during the previous 10 seconds. For each interval, record a 1 for each behavior that you observe and a 0 for each behavior that you do not observe. Start observing now. Stop now. Next, watch the video again and check your data. Walk. Sniff. Sniff. Walk. Licking. 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 Alert. Walk. Sniff. Licking. Licking. 
alert, licking, sniff, We've covered the major methods you will use to record animal behavior. Let's take a moment to review them. Ad libitum sampling is a non-quantitative, descriptive record of animal behavior. While it is more subjective than other methods, it gives an overall picture of the behavioral repertoire of a population or species. For this reason, it is the preferred method for constructing an ethogram and lays the groundwork for the more quantitative methods. Continuous focal animal sampling is an ongoing record of the behavior of one animal over a specified period of time. This method keeps track of the duration, rate, and sequence of behavior, and therefore works for behavioral states and events. It is the most labor-intensive method, but provides an accurate record of behavior. All occurrences sampling also requires continuous observation over a set time period, but in this case, every instance of each behavior on the ethogram is recorded. Therefore, it's ideal for studying behavioral events. It can be used for studying individual animals or groups of animals. Unlike continuous methods, scan sampling records only the behavior that occurs at set time intervals. It provides an estimate of the duration of each behavior and is used for studying behavioral states rather than events. It can be used for recording the behavior of individuals as well as groups. Scan sampling is easier to record, but less accurate than the continuous sampling methods. 1-0 sampling is a binary sampling method. The presence or absence of each behavior in the ethogram is recorded at set time intervals. It can be used for measuring behavioral states or events and is useful for quantifying keeper reports and field notes. 1-0 sampling is the least accurate quantitative method, but is also the least labor-intensive. In many cases, researchers study events and states at the same time. Continuous sampling provides data on both types of behaviors simultaneously. Alternatively, many researchers opt to use a states method and an events method simultaneously during their observations. Let's return to our bear and flamingo research projects. The first research question asks whether scent enrichment changes the activity budget and use of space in spectacled bears. That means you'll need to record how much time the bears engage in certain behavioral states in different parts of their habitat. To gather these data, you could use a continuous sampling method and record the start and stop of each behavior in the ethogram and the amount of time the animals spend in each area of the exhibit. But bears are fairly active, mobile animals, especially when they are provided with environmental enrichment. Since there are many behaviors on the ethogram, keeping track of all of this information could become difficult. So in this case, using scan sampling may be the better choice. Scan sampling will estimate the amount of time the bears engage in each behavioral state and the time they spend in different exhibit areas. The bears are somewhat active, and a sampling interval of one minute should be adequate for this study. The second research question asks whether successful and unsuccessful female flamingos spend different amounts of time in nesting behavior and whether they have different rates of aggression. To answer these questions, you'll need to collect data on both states and events. Our nesting behaviors are states, and our aggressive behaviors are events. Because the number of behaviors on your flamingo ethogram is relatively small, you have the leisure to record data continuously. Since you're interested in differences in behavior between females, continuous sampling of focal animals should work well in this case. You could use focal animal scan sampling to provide an estimate of the amount of time each female spends in nesting behavior, and pair that with all occurrences sampling to determine the frequency of aggressive behavior. Because flamingos are active birds and highly social, a relatively short scan sampling interval should be used. 
a sampling interval of 30 seconds would be reasonable. When collecting data with paper and pencil, it is important to design your data sheets so that they capture the information you want easily and effectively, and so that they are easy to summarize later. Each data sheet should have a space for you to enter the date and time of the observation, the observer's name or initials, the animal or group of animals being observed, and any other independent variables that might be of interest. For example, you could note the weather on the day of observation. Observing animal behavior is labor-intensive work. Therefore, your data sheets should be designed so that you have to do as little writing as possible. For example, if you are using scan sampling on a focal individual, it is much easier to put a check mark in a box next to observed behavior rather than writing out the behavior or using a code. At the end of the session, it is also easier to simply count the number of checks in each behavior's column than to go through all of the scans and count the number of times each code appears. After you have selected a method and designed a datasheet, it is critical to go and do some preliminary observations. This gives you an opportunity to put the method you've chosen to the test before you start gathering the data that will actually be included in your data analysis later. You may find that you need to adjust your data collection methods and revise your data sheets after trying them out a few times on real animals. Once you've chosen an observation method and have collected data, you'll then need to analyze that data. In the next chapter, we'll cover a variety of data analysis techniques you can choose from.